Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today we're gonna look at the top five features that are on the ATEM series of switchers. So that's the ATEM Mini, the ATEM Mini Pro, and the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. So let's take a look. So guys, this is just a quick video to go through what I think are kind of the top five features of the ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM Mini lineup. Uh, I did a full on super deep dive into all the audio features. This is kind of an addendum to that. Uh, a couple things on here that I didn't mention in that video that I think are really incredible features and it's amazing that this little switch can give you all those features. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the majority of these are actually done through software. So we're gonna jump over to the laptop really quick, take a look, make sure if you wanna follow along here, go ahead and get your setup, make sure that you have the latest A10 Mini software, the switcher software, and that your switcher is up to date. So let's jump over to the laptop and take a look. For the majority of this video, pretty much all of it, we're gonna stick in this audio tab. And I have my mic split in a couple different ways. We are going out to an external recorder. And then as you can see, I have my microphone coming in right here. Now for the interest of time, I know I don't shy away from a long video, but for the interest of time, we are going to uh, not go as in depth on a couple of things. I'll just point out a couple of things that can be done, but we won't go in depth. The first feature is the physical buttons on the actual hardware of the A10 Mini itself, which are great, especially when you're in the middle of a broadcast and you need to adjust something very quickly. Uh, there's really two things you need to worry about, and that is the on-off feature and volume. And for those of you who have an A10 Mini, A10 Mini Pro, A10 Mini ISO, you know that these buttons are readily available. You just have to kind of remember where they're at. So for us, we've got our on-off buttons here on the mic one and two input and physical volume up and down buttons below that. And then on each video input, we have the auto follows video, but then we also have on-off function and the volume up and down. Let's jump over to the software and see exactly how these buttons affect your audio source. All right, so here we are in the software, and as you can see, all of these are set at zero dB or unity gain right now on the fader. So if I come over to uh, microphone input one that I have my lab going through and I hit down, you'll see that switches by three decibels. And that's pretty much what it does in all directions. Now, three decibels isn't that significant, but it can be if you're trying to fine tune your audio. Uh, where I can come in here on this fader and I can slowly move it down and really fine tune that where, you know, if I reset that to zero and then I bump it down, I'm going down by three dB. Where I didn't really need it to go down that far, I just needed it to go down one dB or one and a half, whatever it is. I can't do that physically from the buttons, but it gives you that option to adjust things if you need to. So all in all, they give us quite a bit of functionality on the front to making uh, on-the-go, on on-off decisions and volume decisions. The second feature is the ability to switch between a mic level signal and a line level signal. Now, why is that important? Well, it depends on what source you're coming from. So for instance, I've got a lapel mic on here, lav mic, whatever you want to call it, and it is running at a lower level than, let's say, audio coming off of an iPad or a laptop. Uh, this is running at what's called mic level. So we need that preamp that is built into the A10 Mini to boost that signal up, to actually bring it up to a workable level inside the A10 Mini itself. So they have a preamp on the front end that's gonna boost it up. Now, if we're dealing with something that is a line level signal, like I said, coming out of an iPad or coming out of a laptop, then we want it to be switched to line level. Now let's say you are running a line level signal. Why is it important to make sure it's on line level? It's because if you have it on mic level and you send that signal in, it's routing it through that preamp. So what's gonna happen is it's, the preamp is expecting this lower level signal from let's say a lav mic. And if you're sending this hot signal in there, it's going to distort the preamp and it could damage the preamp, which would basically make those inputs useless at that point. So you wanna make sure it is set to line level so that you can route that signal properly through your A10 Mini. The way that we are going to switch between mic and line level is by clicking on this little sprocket, this cog down here in the corner, and we have uh, the setting win settings window come up, and under audio, right here, analog audio inputs, we have the ability to switch between mic and line level. Now I'm gonna leave this on microphone for my mic one input because that is what I'm plugging my lavalier mic into. Uh, on the second one, we will go to a line level input. 
Now, when you glance at this, there really is no difference. You can't really tell whether it's coming in line or mic level. The difference is, is let's say I go back there and I switch this to line level on my microphone and hit done, and now you'll see my microphone level goes away. It is non-existent. I mean, I'd have to turn this all the way up just to get a teeny little bit coming in. So that's how you can tell whether it's in line level or not, uh, just by the meters there. So I'm gonna switch that back to microphone. And what this allows you to do, the kind of the best part about this is the ability to have a microphone come in on input one and a separate audio source like an iPad or a laptop, something playing background music or bumper music for your broadcast coming in on mic two or input two in this sense. That gives you the ability to mix your bumper music down or your background music down really low. One thing that I wish it would do is when you switch between your mic and line level, I wish it would give you some sort of indication up here on whether you are in a mic level or a line level situation, um, where they could label this preamp level and trim level. Because usually when you're dealing with a source that already has line level signal coming out of it, you're trimming up or down that audio coming in. It's no longer a preamp, it's just a trim. The third feature is that those eighth inch inputs on the back are actually, when in line level configuration, are stereo inputs. So it's just like having an auxiliary input on some other piece of hardware. So if you have music coming from an iPad, if you're doing a broadcast and want background music, it will be full stereo music, full stereo image coming into that. It's a great function to have, especially when you want that background or bumper music in your broadcast. So you're probably thinking, well, what I'm plugging a microphone into it, isn't that gonna get stereo? Well, what the microphone is sending is what's called balanced signal. So it's not technically a left-right uh, on that little TRS connector. It is a hot, cold, and ground on that TRS connector. So it's actually sending a mono signal in there. Now we're gonna look at something a little bit later that kind of breaks that a little bit, but we'll get to that in just a few. It's kind of weird how they have this laid out because this is technically a mono signal coming in right here. It looks like it's stereo because it has two meters on it, but it's technically a mono signal coming in. If you play something back here on, let's say mic two that we have as a line input, it is a stereo input. If we switch mic one to a line level input, you'll get a full stereo image of whatever music you're playing through that input. Now the fourth thing is kind of, we're getting a little deep here, but it's the ability to split all the inputs. What's great about this is you can split your both microphone inputs and all your HDMI inputs if you want. So the way we're gonna split our audio is we go into these settings again under audio and we're gonna do split audio. Now you can split everything at once if you'd like or you can split them individually. Now why would you wanna split the inputs? Well, there's a couple different scenarios that I can see. Let's say you have a clip coming in that you wanna play back on your broadcast. Uh, but for whatever reason, when somebody recorded it, they had one microphone hard to one side and one microphone hard to the other side, left or right. And you don't like that. I hate when people do that. <laughs> it kind of just bothers me because I'm an audio guy. So this allows you to split that HDMI input and you can take each side of those and pan them center, which makes a lot cleaner broadcast. Let's say we have um, something coming in from our computer that we're playing back on our computer. And that is this input right here. And we've got it panned hard left and hard right because it's a stereo signal coming in. But let's say you're playing something back that ends up being uh, in whatever production they had, like the production audio on set, one voice, one lavalier mic was panned hard left, one was panned hard right. Well, you can come in here and you can get those centered in the middle, or they're coming out in the middle and not hard panned left or right, which is great. The second scenario I can see here is if you are, let's say, running uh, background music or bumper music into one of the inputs on the back, and then you're thinking, well, I'm just stuck with one microphone input, but I need two inputs. I've got two labs, I've got two people that I need to have interview back and forth, or I've got two broadcast mics that need to run into this thing. So what do you do in that sense? Well, if you split that first input, if we look at the software, you can see that we split that mic one input and it has its own preamp level, it's got its own 
processing, its own fader, its own pan control. So it is technically two mic inputs in one. If you have the right cable, I think Rode makes something like that where you can combine two microphones and just takes uh, the signal from one and the other and puts it on left channel and right channel. Uh, it's not the best way to do it, admittedly, but it could work if you have that right combiner cable. I need to do some more testing. So like I said earlier, this is not gonna be an in-depth tutorial on how to do this stuff, but this is a theoretical thing and I'll, I'll do a video later on, on the functionality of this and actually having it work. But what you can do, let's say you have, we've got our microphone coming in right here, correct? Microphone one, this is our lavalier mic. And let's say we have music coming in mic two or input two and that's set to line level. Well, I just lost a microphone input. So if I need to plug in two microphones, I can't, but I can, theoretically. So if we go back into settings and let's put our computer back together, let's, let's split out our mic one input and hit done, okay? So right now we are feeding both sides. As you can see, this is split, your left side and your right side. But this is a, it, what this tells me is that is, this actually has four microphone preamps in it. They're basically linking the preamps together when you aren't splitting the signal. Because for instance, I can come in here and I can turn down just this left side and keep this right side up. And I can turn this right side way up or way down. I can do all sorts of things. Uh, each channel now has its own EQ. It has its own dynamics. It's, it has its own uh, fader, its own pan, its own on off. So I can turn these on and off. So theoretically, you could have up to four microphones plugged into this thing. The one thing you're gonna run into is if you use the physical buttons, I'm gonna push down on this and it's going to adjust both. So you are adjusting both of the inputs at that point. But to be able to have four microphones plugged in and if you have you know, your levels set where you want them throughout, and you don't need to touch them, then you don't need to touch them. I'll do another video later on. So for instance, if we split out mic one and two and we switch mic two to microphone level, theoretically we have four microphone inputs now, all with their own preamp control and their own uh, dynamics and EQ and pan and volume and on off button. The fifth thing is that technically this thing is a 12 by two mixer inside. You can run up to 12 inputs and then the two is the stereo left and right out. But every single input, if you split all the channels out, that equals up to 12 and every single input has its own processing, its own trim or, or preamp. It's got its own fader, its own pan functionality. So up to 12 inputs, which is pretty great. So here in the software again, looking at feature number five, and that is that this technically has a 12 by two mixer in it. So let's go back and split our outputs again. If we just select this button here, it'll split all of our inputs. So now we have uh, left, right across all four of our HDMI inputs here, and then all four of our, or all two of our microphone inputs here, or technically it could be four, I believe. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 inputs. And then the by two is the stereo left and right out here. Because what we're looking at here is the mono side. So the left side and the right side of each channel. And each has its own trim functionality. And like I said before, it's on processing, fader, and pan. So that gives you the, the ability, if you run your cards right, you could have multiple inputs coming from here, whether you have an audio embedder of some sort to get it from your audio source to an HDMI input, or uh, whether you're coming off of a computer and you're able to feed things to one side or the other. That's where this could come in handy. And then we have two bonus ones that I wanna talk about. And this one, the first one comes from what I was just talking about, that master fader. That is very key because that's kind of, you can use that to kind of glue everything together. All the, all the microphones and audio sources coming in, you can use the limiter and the compression and the EQ to kind of mold everything together. You've already got your mix, you've got your processing set on individual channels, but being able to run some, especially some sort of limiting, that kind of helps glue everything together. Think of it like uh, when a song gets mixed uh, for radio, 
there's actually two different levels that they go through to to smash the crap out of that or to to kind of bring it all together. The first one is very good. It's called mastering. So they take this mix and they actually send it to a, another audio engineer who specializes in mastering the audio. And that's just making sure that everything across the entire album and the entire song is at a good level and a good level for broadcast over, over radio or whatever. In this case, a lot of days it's just going straight to digital. Uh, the second thing it hits is on that radio side. And sometimes I think YouTube might do it sometimes as they apply their own processing. So for instance, terrestrial radio, when they're broadcasting, they can't FCC rules, I think, says that they can't broadcast over a certain uh, dB limit. So they have to have these hard brick wall compressors that keep everything in line. If you see here on the master fader, we actually have the same two processing modules that we have on every other channel here, the EQ and the dynamics. So we can come in here and have both up at the same time. And I'm seeing you know, my audio come through here. Now, why is it important to do something on the master fader? Well, you've got quite a few things going on here coming in. So if you've got audio sources coming in from your cameras or from a computer, PowerPoint, whatever you have, that's what I have here, PowerPoint. Uh, you can adjust them individually, which is what you wanna do. Uh, as I talked about in the All Things Audio video, I showed you just a couple of examples of what we might do, but using these uh, these processing modules on the master fader gives us the ability to limit. Let's say we wanna limit something like this. You can see some gain reduction happening there. If you start to limit, there we go, we got some extreme gain reduction going on there. Uh, you can limit everything. So it kind of puts a almost a brick wall style limiter on it where it keeps everything in line. Now, can you go overboard on this? Absolutely. This is way too much in my opinion. I mean, we're hitting past minus 10 dB on the gain reduction. So I would suggest um, going in and tweaking these settings and not going too overboard on them. But what this will allow you to do is to glue everything together. It really helps putting that final processing on your master fader to kind of help control any sudden bumps in volume or uh, let's say something pops on your uh, on the input from HD, one of your HDMI inputs, then this will protect not only the volume going out, but any other uh, sources downstream from hearing a loud pop or click. It'll just, it'll contain that. But then it also just helps bring your mix together. Like let's say you have everything going on and you hear this weird frequency somewhere around 500 and you wanna notch that out. So you you make it really, really thin like that and you, you seek and destroy, you find that funny frequency and you cut it. So if you're not, if you don't know exactly which source it's coming from, you can do that. Now that will affect all your other sources, but if you do a very, very thin notch like this, it actually will not be as noticeable. So even if you just cut it a little bit. And the last bonus, the second bonus one that I'll give you is that ability that just came about a few, I think a couple months ago, where we are now able to control the audio delay coming in from those two inputs. Now I did a whole video on this that I will link down below. And in that video, I kind of go through and explain why it has a delay, how to find the delay and how to correct for it. So go check that out. Well guys, I appreciate you tuning into this video and, and taking the time to watch. Hopefully these features will help you in your broadcasts. If this is your first time here, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button, turn on that bell, and it'll let you know when we upload new videos. And definitely hit that like button because that helps us and share it with your friends. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.